Hello, my name is James Ferrier. I'm here with Farms.com in Maidstone, Ontario. We're at a field of corn that uh, has had previous glyphosate resistant uh, Canada fleabane issues, and uh, we just thought we should do a little bit of a um, a little bit of a talk on on glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane. So, uh, previously in Ontario, farmers have always used glyphosate alone. Uh, or with a few different burn down additives to try and get good control of uh, their full spectrum of weeds. But in the last, uh, say, six to eight years, they've really started to struggle with fleabane. And uh, that's when we realized that we have fleabane that's resistant to glyphosate. Uh, traditionally, fleabane's been easily and readily controlled with glyphosate. Um, and that's, uh, that's really been hard for people to wrap their minds around that we can no longer control this weed with glyphosate alone. So uh, the interesting thing about fleabane is that it can emerge pretty much any month of the year. Uh, the majority of it will emerge late fall and early winter um, and it will overwinter as a small seedling and start to bolt in the spring and grow tall. So uh, I'm standing here in front of some fairly tall fleabane. Um, it's also called mare's tail in the U.S. Um, and it'll bolt. Uh, it can grow up to about waist high and start to spread seed. Uh, the seed can be airborne and can travel quite a distance. So just because this field here in Maidstone has uh, resistant fleabane doesn't mean that the seed from here can't end up hundreds of miles away. So um, right now in Ontario, resistant fleabane can be found in uh, in pretty much any county that grows uh, soybeans right now, uh, all across southern Ontario, all the way to the Quebec border. So, um, fleabane is becoming more and more of a problem. I got on my hands here a fleabane plant. Um, a lot of farmers, when they found out they had glyphosate resistant fleabane, thought that they could use tillage as a control mechanism. And in this area here, uh, there were four passes of cultivation uh, done prior to planting of the crop. And we did get some level of control. There are dead fleabane plants here. Um, I'd say we probably controlled 40 to 50% of them in this area. Um, but a lot of them bent over um, by the cultivator and started to grow back up. This, uh, this growth habit that the uh, fleabane exhibits after being cultivated uh, really shows how tough a plant it is and how important it is to use a, uh, use a herbicide as well as uh, cultivation to get full control of your, uh, of your fleabane problem. So one of the reasons that we're so concerned about glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane is the fact that it's very prolific. Um, this, uh, these plants can set hundreds and thousands of seeds and uh, if you don't control it at the first offset, uh, you, you can eventually have a mat of glyphosate resistant fleabane. Uh, I've been in fields where the population is so heavy that you can't even see the ground. Uh, that's an extreme, uh, extreme situation, but it happens if you don't get adequate control right off the bat. Um, if you want to explore control options, you can check out www.newfarm.ca and we have a suite of products that we feel are strong on glyphosate resistant Canada fleabane and uh, can help you stop the issue before it gets going. This video is brought to you by farms.com.